Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Miller. In video one, we discuss some of the breathing and coughing exercises that can help support lung function for people with ALS. Unfortunately, these practices cannot stop the progression of the disease itself. As your ALS advances, your respiratory muscles will weaken, causing breathing to become more difficult and your discomfort level to rise. In this video, we discuss several options for respiratory support equipment that many people with ALS use to address respiratory issues. Before we discuss these options, Dr. Lisa Wolf will provide more detail on the symptoms you may be experiencing. As we discussed in video one, loss of respiratory muscle control impacts ventilation, resulting in increased work of breathing, increased levels of carbon dioxide in the body, and a buildup of secretion in the lungs and airways. As the muscles involved in breathing further weaken, you'll probably experience shortness of breath much more often. Coughing will also become more difficult, which makes it harder to clear your airway. You may find that lying flat is very uncomfortable and vivid dreams may begin to plague you. Even in the absence of these symptoms, your care team should be monitoring your respiratory muscle strength. If you don't have a care team, you can go to any hospital and most medical centers to have your respiratory muscle strength tested. Respiratory muscle strength can be tested in several ways, both sitting up and lying down, by measuring your maximum inspiratory pressure, in other words, your ability to breathe in, your peak cough flow, or the strength of your cough, your vital capacity, which is the volume of air that can be forcibly exhaled out of your lungs after you have taken in the deepest possible breath, and your overnight oxygen levels. When these measurements decrease significantly, you need to consider multiple modalities for respiratory support. Brian Daniel, a respiratory therapist, We'll discuss three options for respiratory support equipment that many people with ALS use. A variety of equipment is available to help make breathing easier. So let's begin. This is a non-invasive positive pressure ventilation device or bi-level assisted breathing device. It helps to inflate the lungs when the breathing muscles become too weak to do the job adequately. Typically, people with ALS start using bi-level assisted breathing at night when breathing is more difficult. Then increase its use during the daytime hours as breathing muscles further weaken. Be aware that there are non-invasive ventilators made for different conditions. People with ALS should use a non-invasive ventilator that includes a backup rate, which kicks in when your breathing rate falls below a certain level. These devices are called interfaces or masks. These connect the ventilator tubing to your face. You can choose from several types of interfaces, including a nasal interface, uh, which attaches to the nose. There is the oral mask, which also attaches the ventilator to your face. It covers both the nose and the mouth. And then there's the hybrid, which actually has the nasal pillows, and it has the mouth interface as well. Your ALS team can help you choose the best interface for you based on your comfort and ability to adapt to using the equipment. You can even use different interfaces at different times of the day, depending on your comfort needs. This is a cough assist device. It helps clear airway secretions from the lungs and works much like a fireplace bellows. When you breathe in, the machine gives you a mini burst of air to help expand your lungs. When you breathe out, the machine creates a sucking force that pulls the air out. The cough assist can be used three ways. It can help you clear secretions from the airway, it can assist in coughing, and it can be used to give you a large side breath or take a deep breath to expand your lungs. New treatment options are always on the horizon. Some help with breathing while others help keep the airways clear. This diaphragm pacing system has been shown to help some ALS patients who are experiencing chronic hypoventilation. Ongoing studies are being conducted 
to evaluate further effectiveness of this device and others. The purpose of respiratory support equipment is to increase your comfort and quality of life as your ALS progresses. While you may not want to think about using respiratory support equipment, many people with ALS change their minds as breathing becomes more difficult. The sad truth is your ALS will continue to progress to the point at which your discomfort level is very high. You may then consider the use of invasive ventilation, such as a breathing tube. This, along with end-of-life considerations, will be discussed in video three. For now, an ALS specialist will provide answers to the most frequently asked questions regarding respiratory support equipment. Can we start using respiratory support equipment too soon? The purpose of respiratory support equipment is to increase your comfort and quality of life as your ALS progresses. Only you can decide when you are ready to use the support available to you. However, the sooner you get started, the better you will likely feel and the more you'll be able to preserve your current lung function. Understanding why your ALS care team recommends certain equipment and how it works goes a long way toward helping you make the most informed decisions for you and your loved ones. Is it possible to start using respiratory support system too late? Good question. Yes, the later you start using respiratory support equipment, the more difficult it will be to adjust to it, and the less effective the equipment will be in supporting your respiratory function. Will using respiratory support equipment make me weaker? Actually, using respiratory support equipment will probably make you feel stronger because it will decrease your own work of breathing. What if I start using respiratory equipment and then I decide I don't want to? The reasons to use respiratory support equipment are to decrease your work of breathing and increase your comfort and quality of life as your ALS progresses. If you feel comfortable not using the equipment, you certainly have the choice to stop using it. In that case, other palliative measures can be used to maintain your comfort level. Will using respiratory support equipment slow the progression of my ALS? Respiratory support equipment is not a cure for ALS and it will not stop the overall progression of the disease. However, it may help to extend your life or improve your overall quality of life. In fact, Research has shown that those who use non-invasive ventilation at least four hours a day lived an average of 12 to 15 months longer than those who did not use it at all. What happens when I'm so weak I have to use it 24 hours a day? Some people with ALS do use non-invasive ventilation 24 hours a day. However, some decide at that point to have a breathing tube placed. This will be discussed more in detail in video three. Everyone's journey with ALS progresses at a different rate. Some people find that respiratory issues accompany the early stages of the disease. Others find that breathing problems don't come until much later in the disease progression. Either way, the unfortunate truth is that the journey with ALS eventually ends in death. As a person with ALS, you have the right to decide what types of treatment, support, or interventions can be used to prolong your life or to allow nature to take its course at the end with as much comfort as possible. Understanding the choices available to you, as well as your own situation, will go a long way in helping you make the best decisions for you and your loved ones. In video three, we will discuss respiratory support choices at the end of life. While this can be a very upsetting subject to discuss, the inevitability of ALS requires it. Remember, your care plan is not set in stone. You can decide to change your mind or discontinue any treatment at any time. As long as you have a care plan in place, it's your decision. Uh, hi, I'm Joe Scalbanini. I was diagnosed with this uh, ALS disease and uh, started to use uh, BiPAP uh, almost immediately thereafter. Well, I would say the initial um, diagnosis of a disease like ALS is the most devastating part. Um, nobody expects to be diagnosed with something so significant and life-changing. 
We've been fortunate that our, our children, adult children, are close by and active in our lives. And I think from their perspective, you know, having their dad around for as long as they possibly can and with a device um, such as the BiPAP, which has really helped, you know, I obviously extend his life and give him the ability to go out and do things together with them. We've been able to participate in some of their activities. So I've used this device uh, intermittently at first in the daytime as well as uh, full time at night uh, and found it to uh, afford a lot of energy regeneration during the daytime and sleep well at night. Um, I couldn't have predicted at the time I was diagnosed whether I'd still be here for that matter, but uh, uh, at this point in time I'd rank my life as uh, pretty full thanks in part uh, to, this, uh, to this device because it uh, allows me to do pretty much anything that I want to do within the constraints of having to be sort of wheeled around as compared to walking around. If I had it to do all over again, uh, the decision to start to use it and to continue to use it, it was just a no-brainer. Hi, I'm Neil Culp, and this is my daughter, Lisa, my primary care giver, and I've had symptoms of ALS uh, approximately two and a half years. I've been on some type of ventilator support for uh, about a year and a half, um, and have recently, well, along with my family, been faced with the decision about invasive ventilation support. Dad's response to his disease has been very much like his approach to life. Um, and he, as he was making these decisions, wanted very much for it to be a family decision. I'm a retired physician, uh, and I, along with my family, have been able to make these decisions. He's got a wonderful wit and the ability to be able to communicate and to talk with his friends and his family um, is very characteristic of his life and I think he wanted that to continue for as long as possible and we support that. I've been blessed with um, very good quality of life in terms of my support with my current non-invasive ventilation. I think it was easy for all of us to take Dad's lead in choosing um, not to have an invasive tracheotomy and to utilize um, his BiPAP machine with the options that it offers so that his life could be as normal um, as it's always been.